The U.S. cable project is very important to Hawaii. With today's technology, new Trans-Pacific cables are bypassed in Hawaii. Technology has reached a point where Hawaii is no longer a necessary stopping point for these cables. That concerned Hawaiian Telecom. Our customers' bandwidth demand will continue to grow, and the only way that we can meet that demand is to purchase more capacity to the mainland. We can either do it through other systems, be dependent on them and their pricing in order to fulfill this requirement, or we can get involved in cable projects like this and take a proactive approach and actually become owners of that bandwidth and actually control our own destiny. So we chose to take that path instead. Fortunately, we came across the CUS cable Hawaiian Telecom made a pitch to the consortium that landing in Hawaii would be a good idea and that Hawaiian Telecom would be willing to invest in this cable to make this a reality. The CUS cable is the most technologically advanced trans-Pacific cable system, providing the fastest direct access between the U.S. and Indonesia. This ultra-long-haul submarine fiber system connects Indonesia, the Philippines, Guam, Hawaii, and California. The historic $250 million cable system extends nearly 9,000 miles on a route designed to bypass congested, earthquake-prone regions like the Luzon Strait. It also provides diversity to the Northern Pacific route between Japan and the U.S. CUS delivers an initial 20 terabit per second capacity using state-of-the-art 100 gigabit per second technology. This capacity helps to meet the exponentially growing demand for bandwidth between the U.S. and Asia while enabling onward connectivity to existing and planned submarine cable systems. The CUS consortium members include Hawaiian Telcom, Globe Telecom in the Philippines, their U.S. subsidiary GTI out of LA, GTA in Guam, RTI based in San Francisco, Telen from Indonesia, and their U.S. subsidiary Telen USA in LA. The Hawaii Cable Landing Station is being built in Makaha, and we decided to use that property to land the CUS cable here in Hawaii. And I'm so proud that we're here. I'm proud that we're going to break ground, but I also know that we're going to do it as good stewards of the land. Okay, go. Okay. And then open it there and over, sprinkle it all over the. There you go. Lift up the soil a little bit there, and let's do it again. Two, and one more time. Three, huh? There you go. Okay, you wanna... Okay. Building modules have arrived, gonna be ready for setting today. So they are preparing them, and soon they're gonna back them up the hill to place them on the foundations that were poured about a week ago. There's three large sections. That section alone weighs over 55,000 pounds. It's going to be hoisted up with a big crane up on top of the hill there. We have utility trenching happening. We're tying in the lines that come to the facility and dispatch back out for service to the uh, community. Hawaiian electric lines and the fiber optic lines. So behind me we got the main drilling operation that's going on. That is going to be drilling the line to connect to the offshore cable. And I don't know if you can see, these are the new building foundations. That's where the modules are going to be set. Three pieces are going to be set right there. The area around it is all going to be a paved parking area, fenced-in facility. All the rest of the area is graded up and built up to make it a nice level working area. Then everything's going to be all regrassed and cleaned up and asphalt paved when we're done. The responder is one of two ships that are placing the cable to Hawaii from California. It started placing the cable there back in January and then after that landing made its way to Hawaii. There's another ship that has started the cable placement in Guam and has worked its way to Hawaii also. So this vessel lengths about 105 meters, carrying out about 5,800 tons of cable. So this vessel carrying this cable from Japan to California, make cable landing, oh, and come to here. From California to here, it's about 4,000 kilometer plus. So we have uh, two main tanks. Each cable tank have about 2,800 tons capacity, and we have another spare tank as well. 
All the cable placement between Guam and California to Hawaii has been completed. After over two years of planning, engineering, I mean, we finally are landing the cable here at Makaha Beach. As you can see, the responder is out there. That's the cable ship that is placing the cable. Cable will go from that ship all the way to shore, being pulled by the crew at the beach manhole over there, and just an exciting day all around. This is the latest cable that we got to land here in Hawaii. There's three main cables that serve Hawaii today, and this will be the fourth. But two of the three cables are about 18 years old, and with a cable lifespan of 25 years, we know in a few years those cables will be put out of commission. I am pleased to proclaim July 28, 2017, as CUS Trans-Pacific Fiber System Day and recognize and appreciate the efforts of Hawaiian Telecom in guaranteeing connectivity in the global economy and really connecting us uh, with broadband to our partners in Southeast Asia and the West Coast, which is so important to our economic vitality. So congratulations to all of those involved. You know, the CUS project is a huge achievement, not only for Hawaiian Telecom and the benefits we receive, but for the community and the state. I mean, for us to be part of a project that connects the entire state to the rest of the world is very, very important, and I'm so proud of all the hard work that our employees put into making sure that that project came to fruition.